Well, let me welcome everyone to First Presbyterian Church in Lexington, North Carolina, and our online experience of worship by stream. I did not have a whole lot of time to work through all of the technical aspects, and I am hopeful that by next week, this will be a much more streamlined and more interactive uh, experience. But for right now, I have put together a number of uh, videos and audio recordings uh, that will walk us through worship. I've got a prelude and a postlude with Connie, and I will be leading call to worship and prayer of confession and uh, scripture readings and the sermon. And so I hope that you will enjoy this as we worship together through online streaming. A couple of announcements. First, uh, to let you know that obviously many things have been canceled. Keep on the church website and the church Facebook page for the most up-to-date information. I am hopeful to put together a daily brief 5-10 to minute uh, podcast and you can find that through the sermon feed on the church website so for announcements I've got one from touching Davidson County with love because of the coronavirus concerns touching Davidson County with love will no longer occur on Saturday April 4th as has been planned the organizers hope to reschedule this 14 year old countywide service project which seeks to honor God and by helping our neighbors. We will let you know as soon as they make a decision on a new date and volunteers from our church will be able to choose from eight separate projects when that happens. Meanwhile, we would like to continue working on one of the projects which is to collect items for Davidson Medical Ministries. That's something we can do to help a medical agency during this health crisis. The Davidson Medical Ministries is a nonprofit that helps local patients lacking resources gain access to quality health care. Uh, they need soap, shampoo, hand towels, combs, toilet paper, paper towels, ink pens, paper clips, and tape. And so if you can donate that, bring them by the church and drop them in boxes labeled for Davidson Medical Ministries or Touching Davidson County with Love in the church lobby. The Women of the Word Ecumenical Bible Study has uh, canceled its remaining few weeks. That also means that there will not be a celebration dinner for this spring session. Also, the Greater Lexington Area Ministers Association have decided to cancel the remaining three Lenten services that happen on Wednesday. So now let us turn to worship with our morning prelude by Connie Burleson.
let us call ourselves to worship. Protect us, O God, for in you we take refuge. We will say to the Lord, You are my Lord. We have no good apart from you. Bless the Lord who gives us counsel. We will keep the Lord always before us. Because the Lord is at our right hand, we shall not be moved. God, you have given us a great victory in Jesus and good news to share with a world who needs good news. Yet we confess that too often we lock ourselves away in fear, unable to proclaim the risen Christ. Forgive us and fill us with courage and faith. Empower us to trust you to provide and equip us for the tasks you have set before us. Make us bold in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will be reading three passages of Scripture this morning. The first comes from Numbers chapter 13, and I'll be reading selected verses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Send men to spy out the land of Cana, which I am giving to the Israelites. Moses sent them out to spy in the land of Cana, And said to them, Go up there into the Negev, and go into the hill country, and see what the land is like, and whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, and whether the land they live in is good or bad, and whether the towns that they live in are unwalled or fortified, and whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are trees in it or not. Be bold, and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now it was a season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob near Labo Hamath. 
At the end of the 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with them said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim, the Anakites come from the Nephilim, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. The second reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. There they gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and the Israelites stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion called Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us, the Philistines said. Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And finally, our last passage comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One summer night during a severe thunderstorm, a mother was tucking her small son into bed. She was about to turn off the light when he asked her in a trembling voice, Mommy, will you stay with me all night? Smiling, the mother gave him a warm, reassuring hug and and said tenderly, I can't, dear. I have to sleep in Daddy's room. There was a long silence that followed, and at last it was broken by the boy's shaky voice saying, The big sissy. A five-year-old Katie was in the kitchen as her mother made supper, and Her mom asked her to go into the dark pantry and get a can of soup, but Katie didn't want to go in alone. She said, it's dark in there and I'm scared. And mom asked her again and Katie resisted. And finally mom said, it's okay. Jesus will be in there with you. Katie walked hesitantly to the door and slowly opened it. And she peeked inside, saw it was dark and started to leave when all at once she came up with an idea and said, Jesus, if you're in there, would you hand me a can of tomato soup? My friends, fear is a powerful emotion. It can make children hide under their bed during a thunderstorm. It can stop even the strongest person in his tracks. And 
and certainly in the, this last week, we as a community have been experiencing a lot of fear, really, as a, as a nation, a lot of fear of the unknown with respect to the coronavirus. We certainly don't know uh, how long we're going to be dealing with it, but there certainly is a lot of fear. And so this morning, I wanted to look at a few passages that talk about fear and our response to fear as we together uh, walk through this unprecedented time as a nation. Now in our Samuel passage, we see that the Israelites are camped out on one side of a great valley. Uh, The Philistines are on the other side. Uh, The Philistines sent out their best fighter, Goliath, to fight a chosen soldier from the Israelites. And the winner gets to enslave the other, the loser side. Now Goliath, as you might remember, was a menacing figure standing anywhere between 8 and 9 feet tall. His fighting armor was enormously heavy, and he had an attitude to match his side, taunting the Israelites to send out someone brave enough to fight him. We read in 1 Samuel 17, 11, When Saul and all of Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And then later on in verse 24, all the Israelites, when they saw the man, fled from him and were very much afraid. In our Numbers passage, the spies have just returned from surveying the promised land. The land is rich, filled with milk and honey. And while the inhabitants are large, Joshua and Caleb believe in the Lord's word and they recommend that they go in and take the land. The other spies, however, were afraid. And they said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. And so they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim, the Anakites that come from the Nephilim, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. Here they are so afraid that they try to elect a new captain who will lead them back to enslavement in Egypt. And then in the Gospel passage, it's, it's Resurrection Sunday. The disciples have yet to see Jesus or know that he had been risen. On that Friday, they had run away, fearing that they would be captured and put to the same death as Jesus. And on Sunday, they were still afraid. And we read in John 20, verse 19, that when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Each of these passages show us just how powerful the emotion of fear can be. Fear calls the Israelites under King Saul to freeze. Fear calls the Israelites led by Moses to disobey God. And fear calls the disciples to hide. So as we reflect on these stories to discover what they have to say to us, I want to reflect on three things. First, the results of what fear does to us. And then I want to talk a little bit about how fear can be infectious. And then I want to talk, finally, about what is our antidote to fear. Now, there's a story about Black Bart, who was a professional thief, whose very name struck fear as he terrorized the Wells Fargo stage line between 1875 and 1883 where he had robbed 29 different stagecoach crews. Amazingly, Bart did all of this without firing a shot because a hood hid his face. No victim ever saw his face. He never took a hostage and was never trailed by a sheriff. Instead, he used fear to paralyze his victims. And it was his sinister presence that was enough to overwhelm even the toughest stagecoach guard. Fear does paralyze people. They become afraid to move forward or backward. I mean, think about the David and Goliath story. Fear paralyzed the Israelites. 
They were afraid of Goliath. He was big and menacing, and so no one stepped forward to challenge him. They just camped out day to day as Goliath came out to taunt them. Now, as I think about where we are today, certainly fear of catching the virus can can paralyze us. But I think there are ways that we can continue to go about our lives, living our lives, but be prudent about it. And you certainly heard of all the the things suggested by the the CDC about good hand-washing behavior and avoiding super large crowds. So I think as long as we are prudent and reasonable about our own hygiene, I don't think that we need to allow this kind of fear to paralyze us and keep us from moving forward and living our lives. When we allow fear to paralyze us, we can become unable to be used by God because we get stuck. God may want us to to reach out to somebody, but fear causes us to stay put. So let's do our best not to allow the, the fear to paralyze us and trust in God's will and providence and leading. Not only does fear cause us to be paralyzed, it also causes us to hide. It's said that the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin so feared for his safety that his residence in Moscow contained eight bedrooms. And each night, Stalin chose a different bedroom at random to ensure that no one knew exactly where he was sleeping. The disciples hid themselves away in the upper room for fear of the Jews. Do you remember Adam and Eve? They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and the wife had hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And the man said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And certainly our fear today might want to make us hide. And again, as I said, I think as long as we are reasonable and prudent with our interactions with people, we don't have to be hiding from one another. So not only does the fear paralyze us, not only does fear cause us to hide, it can often sometimes cause us to disobey. Israel's fear of the large people in the land of the promised, which led to their desire to return to Egypt, had consequences. They disobeyed God, and as a result, God did not allow that generation to enter into the promised land. Think about it. Has fear ever caused you to ignore the leading of God, or disobey God's will for your life. Fear certainly can lead to disobedience, especially if it seems like God is asking us to do something that to our human minds seem foolhardy. And I think finally, fear diminishes our proclamation. The disciples hid in fear of the upper room, and as a result, they were not telling people about Jesus. And so think about it. Has fear ever kept you from sharing your faith with someone? When we fear being rejected, when we fear looking like a fool, when we fear being labeled religious, our proclamation is diminished. Now let me share with you a a few thoughts about how fear can be infectious. For three summers, I was a counselor at a Presbytery summer camp. It was a rustic camp with cabins and raised platform tents. And one summer evening, one of the girl campers thought she saw a man in a white hat sneaking around the camp. She told a friend who told a friend who told a friend, and before you know it, the camp was in a frightened panic. Every camper was convinced that this man in the white hat was going to attack them. This got so bad that the male counselors began sleeping on the floor in front of the door of the girls' cabins. One person's fear infected everyone else, and the camp soon became paralyzed. Fear is infectious. Hear these words from Deuteronomy 20. When you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. 
before you engage in battle, the priest shall come forward and speak to the troops and say to them, Is anyone afraid or disheartened? He should go back to his house, or he might cause the heart of his comrades to melt like his own. That's Deuteronomy 21 to 3 and verse 8. Even God understood how fear can cause others to lose heart. Think of that story from Numbers. The ten spies came back from the land of promise, fearing the large people who lived there, and their fear infected the rest of the Israelites. And then all of the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night, and all the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation and said, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into the land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become booty. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And so they said to one another, Let us choose a captain and go back to Egypt. My friends, fear can infect other people with fear. When we allow fear to take hold of us, it begins to spread just like the coronavirus. And oftentimes it takes a life of its own. So if fear paralyzes us, if it causes us to hide from God, if it causes us to disobey, if it diminishes our proclamation, if it's infectious like a virus, what are we to do in the face of situations like the one that we are all living in right now? Well, I think the first thing that we do is that we express our trust and faith in God. Psalm 56, 3-4 says, O Most High, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I am not afraid for what can flesh do to me. Isaiah 12, 2, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. We can express our trust and faith in God, and we can believe in God's promise that he will be with us through the things that cause us fear, including this virus. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41.10 Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Isaiah 44.8 So our antidote to fear is that we do our best to express our trust and faith in God. We believe in God's promise to be with us even in these difficult times. And we do not take counsel of our fears. During World War II, a military governor met with General George Patton in Sicily. And when he praised Patton highly for his courage and bravery, the general replied, Sir, I am not a brave man. The truth is I am an utter craven coward. I have never been within the sound of gunshot or in the sight of battle in my whole life that I wasn't so scared that I had sweat in the palm of my hands. Years later, when Patton's autobiography was published, it contained this significant statement by the general, I learned very early in my life, however, never to take counsel of my fears. I guess the, the final anecdote to our fears is that we share our faith, not our fear. Faith can become as infectious as fear, and faith will conquer fear. Robert Louis Stevenson said, Keep your fears to yourself and share your courage with your friends. My friends, certainly we are now in a place where fear can paralyze us where fear can cause us to hide, where fear can keep us from doing something God wants us to do. And so I encourage you, do not take counsel of those fears. Have faith that God will be with you 
and will strengthen you. And God will honor that. He will honor not allowing fear to paralyze us. He will honor us as we speak boldly on his behalf. He will honor us as we step out in faith and courage. And so let us pray that God would encourage us during this time of fear, that we would not feed our fear, but instead feed our faith and do our best to trust that God is present with us and God is walking with us and that we are not alone. I will continue to pray for our community and each of you and encourage you to reach out to me as you feel need to talk. May God bless you all and may God bless our congregation. We declare that Jesus is Lord. His resurrection is a decisive victory over the powers that deform and destroy human life. His lordship is hidden. The world appears to be dominated by people and systems that do not acknowledge his rule, but his lordship is real. It requires our loyalty and sets us free from fear of all lesser lords who threaten us. We maintain that ultimate sovereignty now belongs to Jesus Christ in every sphere of life. Jesus is Lord. He has been Lord from the beginning. He will be Lord at the end. Even now, He is Lord. Let us pray. O God of courage and might, over and over, Your angelic messengers speak through the Scriptures and say, Fear not. Do not be afraid. These angels have proclaimed courage to shepherds and beggars and kings. And yet here we are, fretting with much fear. We confess our fear with downcast eyes, for we know it is an expression of our distrust of you and a clue about how far our faith is yet to grow. Lord, we do waste precious time and energy on worry and complaints. We ask that you'd forgive us when our anxiety stunts our faith and hardens our hearts. And we admit that fear has crippled us at so many points. We fear rejection, so we decline the opportunity to make a new friend. We fear appearing ridiculous, so we give up on a lifelong dream. We fear change, so we sacrifice opportunity. We fear heartbreak, so we opt for loneliness rather than risking genuine intimacy. We fear failure, and so we default on opportunities to make our lives stand for something. And Lord, certainly right now we are fearful of this whole situation we are going through with the coronavirus. Help us to trust your love and protection, knowing that our lives are in your hands. And Lord, we pray especially today for all of us who are fearful. Those facing surgery or illness or pain, those who dwell in dangerous neighborhoods, those who don't know what they will eat tonight or where they will sleep. We pray for those who fear catching the coronavirus. We pray for those who are treating, those who are suffering with the virus. We pray for our nation and its leaders that they might make things happen so that we can truly address this pandemic and see our way out of it. We pray for the pharmaceutical companies who are working on testing kits and vaccines. And through it all, Lord, we exclaim our trust in you. 
We ask that you would remind us that you are with us, that you are walking beside us. We ask that you would banish our fears, help us not take counsel of our fears, and instead feed our faith and trust in you to lead us through this difficult time. We know you are with us, and we ask that you would so encourage us in the days ahead. All these things we pray in and through the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we have now reached the part in our service when we normally take up the offering. Obviously, that is not able to happen. But I did want to take a moment to remind everyone that while we are not gathering together in person, our expenses continue. So I would encourage everyone in response to the blessings that God has given you to make every effort to give to the Lord through the ministry of our church. On the church's website, up in the upper right-hand corner, there is a word that says giving. And if you click on that, that will take you to a page that will connect you to ways to give to the church online. Of course, you can mail your gifts to the church through the U.S. mail or drop them by the office sometime during regular business hours. We certainly do appreciate all of your support that makes our ministry possible. Thank you.
taking counsel of your fears, but trusting in the presence and the goodness of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forevermore. Amen. Yep. Thank you.